Hello, my name is Yoji Shemizu. I'm a professor and director of the Medical Scientist Training Program, the MD-PhD program at the University of Minnesota. And this presentation is about the MD-PhD career path, the University of Minnesota MSTP, and the MD-PhD admissions process. So let's start first with what is a physician scientist? The physician scientist is an individual who combines clinical medicine with the discovery and application of new knowledge through research. And physician scientists are particularly motivated by using research as the foundation to improve the health and well being of patients. Most MD PhDs work in an academic setting, like a medical school or a research university. Others work in industry as well as in research institutes. And most MD PhDs conduct a variety of types of research, ranging from basic science research to translational and clinically focused research, patient oriented research, as well as health services, public health research, as well as other research areas. So a key question might be why do the MD PhD, particularly given that this is a long training pathway that typically takes about eight years to complete both the MD and the PhD. One is this is a very unique career path. It has both local and global impacts on medicine and science. You can have a local impact through the patients that you see in your clinic, but your research activities can also lead to global impact and changes in the way healthcare is delivered. MD PhD programs are very motivated to effectively integrate the scientific education that you get with your PhD with your medical education that you get with your MD. The formal training that you receive during the PhD years in an MD PhD program provides you with some protected time to help you develop your skills as a research scientist early in your physician scientist career. There are both strong local as well as national communities of physician scientists that provide career development and overall strong support. And finally, there's a clear national need for more physician scientists at academic medical centers throughout the country. In the United States, there are about 90 MD PhD programs and 50 of those are funded by the NIH through a T32 training grant mechanism called the Medical Scientist Training Program or MSTP. The University of Minnesota is one of those 50 NIH funded MSTPs. And these programs go through a rigorous peer review process to meet national expectations with regard to the quality of MD PhD training that's being provided within the program. Another important thing to remember is that we provide financial support for you while you're completing MD PhD training. This includes a stipend for your living expenses, as well as full tuition support during medical school and graduate school, as well as health insurance. And graduates of MD PhD programs go on to do a variety of residency training specialties in clinical medicine. They are engaged in research more than 50% of the time, and they have a high level of career satisfaction. Over 80% of MD PhD graduates have indicated they would choose to pursue MD PhD training again if they had to do it all over. So now let's turn specifically to the University of Minnesota MSTP and provide you with some information about our program. So two of the key pillars of our program are the integrated nature of the training experience, as well as the opportunity to make it flexible and individualized to meet needs of individual students. This graphic here shows you the basic framework of MD PhD training at the University of Minnesota, which typically involves the completion of the first two years of medical school training the PhD research in the middle, and then going back after the completion of the PhD to complete the final two years of medical school. But you can see in this graphic that there's effective integration of medicine and science throughout the training pathway. So this includes some research opportunities during the first years of medical school, clinical activities during the PhD, and opportunities to pursue research when completing uh, the PhD and going back to medical school. There's early engagement with research, so research rotation, a research rotation occurs before the first year of medical school begins, so that you can engage with the research community at the University of Minnesota early in your training. The clinical activities during the PhD years are formalized through a formal longitudinal clinical continuity and mentoring program that takes place during the PhD years. And there's opportunity to do some additional research when you complete your medical school training. There's also an opportunity to complete some formal clinical training before the PhD begins, again, giving you the opportunity for some flexibility and individualization of your MD-PhD training pathway. 
A third important foundation is that we take advantage of a broad array of research opportunities that exist at a large research university like the University of Minnesota. We worked with 12 different graduate programs to provide PhD research opportunities for MD PhD students. These include the core biomedical sciences graduate programs listed here, as well as PhD opportunities in biomedical engineering, chemistry, medicinal chemistry, biomedical informatics and computational biology, and two graduate programs in our School of Public Health, Epidemiology and Health Services Research Policy and Administration. A fourth important foundational pillar is our enduring commitment to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We have a longstanding Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, or JEDI committee. This committee is responsible for overseeing a number of important activities within the program. This includes a medicine and women in science and medicine group and seminar program, a very active undergraduate physician scientist mentoring program, a number of initiatives and programming that are focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion and anti-racism. The program has recently started a leadership and diversity fellowship award, which recognizes MD PhD students have been who have been particularly active in promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our students founded the University of Minnesota SACNES chapter. In our current student cohort, 49% of our students identify as female, 30% are from underrepresented groups, and 52% are Black, Indigenous, or people of color. Community is also another important component of the MD PhD program at the University of Minnesota. Uh, we have developed a number of opportunities for students to develop leadership skills through peer mentoring and student led organization of program activities. These include extensive involvement in our admissions and recruiting process. MSTP monthly meetings, which are organized by our students, our annual retreat, uh, volunteer events in our uh, community, and social activities as well. We have a very collaborative collegial group of students that really value and promote collective as well as personal success. And although MD PhD training is rigorous uh, and challenging, uh, our students also manage to have a lot of fun while they're pursuing this career, uh, this training pathway. Finally, we provide a lot of academic, professional, and personal support. Uh, for example, we provide extensive grant writing support, and as a result, our students have an outstanding track record of obtaining external fellowships. There is very active personalized mentorship and professional development that begins in the very first day students enter our program and continues throughout the entire MSTP training timeline, including advice and personal support for residency training plans. We have a very high level of completion of both degrees. The MD PhD completion rate over the last 10 years has been 97%. Okay, now let's turn to uh, admissions and what are admissions committees looking for in a competitive MD PhD applicant. So these are some of the uh, experiences and metrics that we look at when we do a holistic assessment of applicants to the University of Minnesota MSTP. Well, most important is probably sustained and independent research experience, which I'll talk about a bit in the next slide. Uh, we also look for strong academic performance, both in undergraduate and graduate coursework, as well as uh, with the MCAT exam, uh, well-written personal statements that really convey your research expertise, your knowledge of MD-PhD training, and a clear commitment to the physician scientist career path. Letters of recommendation, we require four letters of recommendation, and we're particularly looking for strong endorsements from research mentors, individuals that have worked with you in a research setting. We're also interested in learning more about your experiences in caring for others, either in a healthcare setting or in a non-healthcare setting, that indicate that you're interested in taking care of patients. And finally, we'd like to know more about some of your other extracurricular activities and your other life experiences. These are important in, to us in terms of understanding um, how they've contributed to your long-term career success and your overall well-being. So what, is, how do, what do we mean when we say sustained and independent research experience? Really what we're looking for is sort of, um, have you spent sufficient time pursuing research opportunities to know in fact that research is something that you enjoy and that you're passionate about? So this can include uh, summer research opportunities, for example, in formal summer uh, research programs, research during the academic year as an undergraduate, for example, a senior thesis research project, or one or more years pursuing research after you've completed your undergraduate training. We would really like to know that you're familiar with the idea of testing a research hypothesis and have you had the opportunity to take intellectual ownership 
of a research project. And finally, we look for some evidence of productivity. So for example, have you been able to present your uh, research findings uh, in a poster session, for example, at a local, regional, or national conference? Publications are also um, things that we're interested in, but it's important to remember that uh, having a publication is not a requirement for being a competitive MD-PhD applicant. Funding is another example of productivity. For example, undergraduate research funding that you, you may have obtained uh, to support your research during your undergraduate years in college. But in addition to these experiences and these uh, kind of academic uh, metrics, what's also important for us are attributes that we feel are really important for success as a physician scientist. So these include attributes such as integrity, maturity, curiosity, your ability to persist through challenging uh, situations, your creativity and your empathy, self-awareness, your overall potential for success and growth as a physician scientist, and the way in which you kind of um, exhibit what we would call a growth mindset, the ability to respond positively to a variety of different situations that you will encounter throughout your uh, professional career as a physician scientist. Now, in terms of the overall application timeline, this generally takes about 10 to 12 months from the time that you submit your AMCAS application to the time that you begin your career by joining an MD-PhD program. So the year before you uh, intend to join a program, you would submit your AMCAS application. That typically happens in the summer of the year before you would join a program. For example, in, in uh, late July or August or September. Um, and then uh, there will be interviews that take place these typically begin, for example, in early October for our program and continue through mid-February. And then if you receive offers of admission to programs, those programs will typically offer you an opportunity to come back to the institution for what's called a revisit or a second look opportunity, where you'll be able to explore that program, the institution and the community more to determine whether in fact it's a good fit for you. And then typically by the end of April, you'll have to commit to one program to begin your MD-PhD training. And in many programs, you begin uh, pretty soon after that April, late April deadline. So for example, in our program, we begin with a research rotation, which begins at the, at the end of June. And so uh, there's a quick turnaround between the time that you commit to a program and when you begin uh, MD-PhD training for many programs across the country. So it's important to kind of keep in mind this overall uh, timeline and the uh, time frame involved so that you can be prepared for, uh, for this application and interview process that will take place. Finally, of course, there are questions about what should you look for in an MD-PhD program. Um, probably one of the most important things is to take a careful look at the research environment. So this will be different uh, between different programs. Uh, take a look at the research opportunities. Are they a good match for what you're specifically interested in? What are the graduate programs like? What's the support like? Are there multiple faculty members that you might be interested in potentially pursuing a PhD with? What are the research facilities and other opportunities like within that research environment? Also take a look at the academic environment, not only the clinical curriculum and training that you'll get in medical school, but also the science curriculum and training that you get during the PhD phase. Take a, take a good look at the overall organization of the MD-PhD program itself. What is that community like? How have those students done in the program as well as after leaving the program to give you a sense of how well that program is preparing students for success as a physician scientist? Location is an important factor because you will be there for a fairly long period of time. And obviously you wanna be comfortable with the particular uh, location and community that you're going to be joining. And then finally, there's an overall kind of issue about fit and a sense of belonging. This often comes out through the second visit, for example, where you will be able to kind of really figure out if in fact it feels right, if the program itself feels right for you particularly. And uh, that sense of belonging is really also important in terms of what to look for in an MD-PhD program. So I wanna end with a couple of resources that are online that you should take advantage of if you're interested in MD-PhD training. The AAMC has an MD-PhD dual degree training website. This provides a number of important and interesting and useful tools for MD-PhD applicants, such as calendars that kind of show you the uh, interview dates and the revisit dates for uh, MD-PhD programs across the country. 
There are also summaries of different MD PhD programs. If you're looking for specific research opportunities, uh, this website will have tools that will allow you to kind of identify uh, specific programs of interest to you. If you have an interest in the University of Minnesota MSTP, then I would encourage you to check out our, uh, our website where we have uh, lots of information about the admissions process, our program structure, um, contact information for all of our students. And we encourage you to reach out to us if you have any questions about the University of Minnesota MD PhD program. We also are active on social media. We have a Facebook page as well as a Twitter account. And these can give you some more information about regular activities and events that are occurring uh, at the University of Minnesota MSTP. And with that, I'll end this presentation. This is my contact information. Please contact me by email if you have any questions about our program or about MDP issue training in general or about the admissions process, or you can also contact me uh, through social media. So thank you again for, uh, for listening to this presentation and uh, we wish you the best of luck and we hope that you will explore opportunities that exist for pursuing a career as a, phys as a physician scientist uh, at the University of Minnesota. Thank you.